Hi, this is Rachel, and today we are going to cover topic 21 of our field supervision curriculum, fidelity of implementation. So let's talk about fidelity. When we talk about fidelity, we are talking about uh, the extent to which the intervention is implemented as designed. If you are talking about a consultant in applied work, so in applied practice, we're usually talking about whether or not the program or the teaching plan or the behavior intervention plan is being taught or is being implemented the way that it was written. Um, now, how do we ensure fidelity? Sometimes um, people will say, well, I gave them a good plan. I don't know why they're not doing it right. Well, how do we set people up to implement the plan with fidelity? The first step is to make sure that you're clearly describing the procedure. Um, we went over in the previous topics, uh, topic 19 program development, how to write a really detailed teaching plan that outlines the prompts and prompt fading strategies, any error correction, generalization, maintenance, all of these details are really important to include so that we all have the same frame of reference and the same reference material to look back at. Now, we will talk in a couple of future topics here about how do we write really detailed behavior intervention plans. So same thing there. You've got to start with a really detailed plan um, that everybody can go back and look at. Now, when you are introducing this plan, it's a good idea to make sure that you have everyone who needs to be a part of the plan all in the same place at the same time for a group meeting. Now, sure, in this day and age, it could be online, but that everyone is in attendance that is going to need to implement this plan so that you can explain the plan to the whole group and everyone can ask questions and benefit from hearing the questions and answers for other people. This also is an efficient way for the consultant to make changes and to get that information out so that they are not meeting individually with every single person because a couple of things might happen. One, you might tell people things slightly differently. Uh, two, you might forget who you've told and whether or not you've told everybody all of the information. And three, it can be really frustrating for the consultant if they are feeling like they're continually repeating themselves, even if the recipient, it's the first time they've gotten that information, right? So have a group meeting, get everybody involved, and then talk about and go over what the plan looks like in specifics. This discussion is going to allow for everybody to ask questions um, and for the consultant to provide answers and maybe even clarify in the plan in the written directions um, based upon the questions that people are asking. Because when we look at a plan that somebody else wrote, we may have different questions or we may have a question um, that they didn't think needed to be specified. So then they can go ahead and they can specify those details. After that plan has been presented to everyone, then the consultant should observe each person implementing the new plan. This could be done a variety of ways. First of all, if you've got everybody in the meeting, maybe it's possible to role play um, how to implement this plan where the consultant then pretends to be the learner and each person gets a chance to practice it. Um, if not a uh, role play, maybe the learner is present and each person can practice, especially if it's a, a teaching skill and not a behavior intervention uh, plan, but that teaching skill, each person could have a chance to run that program with the client, with the learner present so that everybody gets a chance to practice and the consultant can give feedback and everybody can benefit from seeing it implemented several times. If it can't be done in the group, then the consultant should be um, following up with each person individually to make sure that they are implementing it, to observe them implementing that plan um, 
as they have written it and then to provide that feedback, right? Um, the consultant should also have um, some visuals or some supports for the people that are going to be implementing the plan to make it easy. So like I said, we write a really detailed plan. That's great. So we have a reference, but maybe we have a few short visuals or a quick checklist task analysis for the provider or the person to implement because they're not going to necessarily be able to read through the big long detailed program maybe we can have the highlights to jog their memory now we can't just give them the highlights right that is to help them remember what was covered in the detailed plan not to replace the detailed plan okay then the consultant is taking data based upon those items, that task analysis of what the provider should be doing. So they could be check marking. Did they use the right SD? Did they deliver a sufficient level of prompt? Did they take the data the way that it's supposed to be taken? Did they reinforce as they're supposed to? Um, you know, what are these variables? And they can checklist each one so that now the consultant has a very systematic way to look at and measure the fidelity of the program so you're basically going to take the program and convert it into a checklist for the person to implement then that person who's implementing it they can have a copy so they can use it as a visual and it can help them remember the steps and the consultant can have a copy and they can use their check marks plus minus however they want to score it to then see are all the steps being implemented as written and if not provide feedback and additional training and practice and modeling or whatever you need to um, to help support the individual to implement it correctly we will have a future topic on behavioral skills training so if this sounds like behavioral skills training it's because it is but we will go into behavioral skills training in more detail this is just to kind of help you visualize how to take a program and convert it into a way to measure the fidelity so that you know if your program is even being implemented the way it was written so for the assignment, um, we've talked about this book before, 25 Essential Skills uh, by Bailey and Birch. Uh, read chapter 15 in it. Um, and then talk about number two, describe how to ensure the fidelity of program and implementation by providers. Uh, so what are the steps? What do you need to do to make sure that the plan is being implemented as it's written? And then create a measurement tool for assessing the fidelity of two different programs. So actually take a program, make your checklist, and turn that into your fidelity uh, tool so that I could use that tool and watch someone implement your program and let you know, yes, no, are they doing it the way that it was written? All right, so as always, if you want to, uh, questions down in the comment section, um, you can type answers to the assignments in the comment section and I'm happy to provide feedback and hopefully you will subscribe and join us for future topics. Thank you.